I'm starting to think that the MonsterVerse is really just one of the parallel universes of the MCU multiverse. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my MonsterVerse review series, today I'm going to be talking about the 2017 action-adventure monster film Kong Skull Island. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Kong Skull Island stars Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, and Samuel L. Jackson and was directed by Jordan Vogt Roberts. Serving as a reboot of the King Kong franchise, it tells the story of a 1973 expedition to Skull Island in which the expeditioners encounter a series of inexplicable creatures. Kong Skull Island was an immensely pleasant surprise for me. No pun intended. I've mentioned it before, but I've never been a huge fan of kaiju movies. They're fun, and I've certainly warmed up to them a lot more in the last few years, but I never really went out of my way to watch them. In fact, I didn't watch this one until it hit Blu-ray, and I'm still kicking myself for not going to see it in the theaters. At the time, I didn't realize it was part of the MonsterVerse. I didn't even know that the MonsterVerse existed, so I was under the impression that this was just another telling of the classic con damsel in distress monster story. And while it does pay homage to that at times, that is not at all what this movie is. Tonally speaking, I found that kaiju films tend to fall into one of two categories. You've got the ones that are very dramatic and serious, viewing the monster as a true threat. And then you've got the ones that are silly. Maybe the underlying story is supposed to be serious, but the campiness turns it into a fun, lighter experience. The first entry in the MonsterVerse, 2014's Godzilla, is a perfect example of the first category. It presents its story incredibly seriously and has a dark, foreboding tone throughout. Now, you might expect that Kong Skull Island would follow in the tonal footsteps of its franchise predecessor, but it doesn't. And it doesn't take the silly, campy route either. Instead, it's a refreshing blend of not only tones, but genres. It's got its intense, serious moments, but it can also be very fun and light at other times, sort of acknowledging the ridiculousness of the scenario. It's a blend of action, sci-fi, comedy, war, adventure, and of course, monster movie. That's a lot to jam into one movie, but it really works. The blend of genres and tone helped to make Kong Skull Island unique among kaiju movies, but there is one other thing that really adds to this uniqueness. It's a period piece. This movie set in 1973, effectively making it the first MonsterVerse story, chronologically speaking. Now, I'll admit that I'm a bit of a sucker for 70s set movies, so this period element really heightens my enjoyment of the film. You guys know that I can't resist some good classic rock, and this movie's full of it in typical Vietnam War movie fashion. CCR, The Hollies, The Chambers Brothers, Jefferson Airplane, and plenty more. I also love seeing the production design and props in these types of movies, and this one's got some really great time-accurate tech, especially with the cameras. But this movie isn't just set in 1973 for no reason. It actually makes sense with the story and themes. This franchise likes to play around with historical events and add fictional context to them. Take the nuclear testing in Godzilla, for example. Here, the movie's able to utilize both the US's withdrawal from Vietnam and the advent of the Landsat program to craft a story, or at least a premise, that sounds plausible. Thematically, this temporal setting works on two fronts. There's the more obvious anti-war, pro-unity and coexistence theme that defined the period, but there's also a surprisingly strong ecological message here too, which pairs up nicely with the environmental movement of the 70s, though it's never explicitly mentioned or connected. This is a story about the need for balance in an ecosystem, and Kong is the keystone species. Although this film differs from Godzilla in a lot of ways, one thing both of these MonsterVerse movies have in common is their impressive visuals. While Godzilla's visuals, ironically, shine the brightest during the dark, smoke-obscured fight scenes, Kong is a visual feast throughout. Skull Island is a very dynamic and visually interesting location, so even before we add the monsters, it's great to look at. It's bright and vibrantly colorful, which, while pleasing to the eye, very easily could have complicated the integration of the CG elements. 
After all, the daytime monster scenes in Godzilla were a little iffy. But three years of technological improvement made a big difference, because these creatures were stunning even in brightly lit scenes. Kong is massive and imposing, but really feels like part of the environment. Fur is a lot harder to animate than scales, but he looks great, even when wet, bloodied, or matted. Plus, this movie introduces us to a whole assortment of other well-adapted creatures, which take the biological concept of island gigantism to the extreme. Unlike with his franchise predecessor, Kong wastes no time making his first on-screen appearance. There's no subtle, slow-build reveal here. We get a sense of his enormity within the first few minutes, and once the film makes it to Skull Island, there's certainly no shortage of Kong. There's also no shortage of human characters. Whereas Godzilla really only gave us a single character to follow, we've got a large ensemble here. Researchers, guides, journalists, soldiers. The cast is actually pretty huge. They all get their character bits to add to the overall ensemble, but very few feel like full-fledged characters that could exist outside of the group dynamic. This does leave most of the characters feeling pretty shallow or underdeveloped, but it's still a huge character improvement over the previous film. In fact, just about every aspect of this movie is a huge improvement over the previous film. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one has got to be the visuals. It's a giant monster movie, so it's obviously pretty CG heavy, but man does it look impressive. There's the more obvious aspects of that, like the creature design, Kong, Mother Longlegs, and the Spore Mantis being my favorites, but there's also the more traditional visual aspects, like shot composition. There are some stunningly framed shots in this movie, the kind of thing you'd want to hang up on your wall. And then, of course, we've got the Kong action sequences. His fight with the Skull Crusher is really satisfying and cool, but nothing in this movie beats the helicopter sequence for me. The second pro is the tonal blend. Some people might argue that this movie tries to pack too much in, and would therefore put this in the cons, but I find this to be such an interesting and satisfying mix. Like its franchise predecessor, this movie certainly has its serious elements. There's some intense sequences, and the creatures and situations that our characters encounter on the island pose a formidable threat. But whereas Godzilla took a dramatic, largely humorless approach, Kong Skull Island balances its serious side with a healthy dose of fun. This story has a lot more humor, but it never gets too over the top or forced. Characters acknowledge how insane the scenarios they're encountering are, which is refreshing, because it always seems strange to me how quickly and seriously characters typically just accept the presence of monsters in a movie like this. Pro number three is the 70s setting. I love a good 70s period piece, so this is a big plus for me. Plus, it's not just a period piece. It's a period action-adventure sci-fi comedy war monster movie. That might sound like a lot, but it really works. And the 1973 setting enhances that by being able to incorporate period-accurate technology as well as actual historical events like the Vietnam War and the establishment of the Landsat program. These things help to tie an otherwise unbelievable sci-fi story to the real world, somehow making it all feel more plausible. Plus, the temporal setting also gives us an excuse to listen to some really great music. On the con side, the only significant problem lies with the underdeveloped characters. And maybe significant is a little too strong of a word, because this doesn't inhibit my enjoyment of the movie at all. It's more about what it could have been, and how much stronger the story would have been with a little more character development with a few of the key human characters. It's an ensemble expedition movie, so we can't really blame them for only giving us some superficial personality traits and characteristics of the secondary and tertiary characters, but it would have been nice to see some expansion of a few of the leads, most notably Brie Larson's Weaver and John C. Riley's Marlowe. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Kong Skull Island or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Kong Skull Island Four out of five paws. This is a fun and action-packed visual spectacle of a movie that does something different with the story of King Kong, while still paying homage to the original film and story. 
I would recommend Kong Skull Island to fans of action-adventure movies. While existing fans of King Kong or Legendary's MonsterVerse franchise will likely enjoy some of the connections and homages, this is a movie that can easily stand on its own. So even if you haven't seen the other films, this one is still perfectly understandable, and as long as you like some expeditionary adventure and big action, you'll find a lot to like about this. If you liked Kong Skull Island, I would recommend the original 1933 King Kong. While there are many story and visual differences between the two, this film pays quite a bit of homage to the original in the same way that Godzilla did a few years before. If you like the environmentally adapted giant creatures and want some more big blockbuster action, you should check out Rampage. It's based on a video game and touts a much lighter, comedic tone than most big monster movies. Plus, it's got a giant gorilla. And if you want another movie involving a scientific expedition to a mysterious location, you might want to watch Annihilation. It's a bit more sci-fi horror, but there's still some decently intense action sequences and some extremely cool creature designs. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Kong Skull Island? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie that involves a scientific expedition? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information on this review, I'd appreciate if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.